I'd like to introduce uh, New Media Society and Amir Ali. Um, our collaboration with New Media Society started in 2008 uh, after the first year of Amber Festival uh, when we um, founded or made a call for Amber Network. So actually New Media Society is one of the uh, founding members of Amber Network. So since then we are collaborating and uh, it is wonderful uh, continuing with this, this collaboration. Uh, I always admire Amirali's energy and wisdom in the field uh, as a director of an independent initiative, independent organization in uh, operating in very difficult conditions. Let's hear their story from Amirali. Thank you, Akma, for the, for the nice words. I'm, uh, I'm sitting at uh, New Media Projects in Tehran, and today uh, I'm all by myself. It's very in the middle of holidays, spring holidays. Very happy to be with you guys. Um, I want to um, talk about like how it started, the New Media Society. Uh, New Media Society is a, is a collective, is an archive, library, and a project space. It also, um, I mean, we showed a, a small film at the beginning of the festival. It has a photo lab and uh, lots of other little tiny detail in the, in the building, which I will go through uh, in, a, in a short while. But um, the history behind this goes a little bit back where we had another uh, project space called uh, Parking Gallery. And Parking Gallery was uh, founded uh, 1998, so almost 22, 20, 22 years ago in September. And it was basically a parking lot uh, where it was below my parents' building. And it was cars, as you can see in the picture. And whenever the cars were, were out or we put them out, we were doing something. We were students, very fresh students at the time. Me and a group of uh, people. I was uh, <coughs> studying uh, visual communication or let's say graphic design at the time. But it was a very interesting uh, uh, opportunity to learn so many things like animation, photography, drawing, and so other things. And it was also the core of like some sort of community building because we realized that um, there were two things that we need to support each other with. First of all, it was uh, the university was not giving, uh, providing so much working space. It was only classes, especially when we moved uh, to more toward the center. Uh, our university, it was Azad uh, University, it was a semi-private university. And also I had to work from the very beginning to, to be able to pay the, the, the university fee. And then we realized also there was not uh, the galleries at the time and the art spaces were not really um, ready or inviting for the young artists. So we thought we do something for ourselves. And that's how the first exhibition started uh, in the summer of 1998, where we put uh, photocopied flyers and we put them in the street. And um, we started to um, also self-learn and uh, teach each other whatever we knew. So it was like also kind of a, like an educational initiative as well. So as you can see, it was like a multi-purpose space. It was um, used for exhibition screening, artist talks, performances, and so on. And this is uh, a little bit uh, later um, to around 2011, 2010, when we uh, renovated the space a little bit. And then we used uh, to have some solo shows and some group shows. Uh, and also use it as a like a working studio for some other project that we we've been through. So as you can see, the map here, the metro map, we are not really we were not really well connected, and we were relying on people who are coming for um, 
for a um, uh, for a space to work or um, so it was not we, we didn't have so much regular visitors unless we have events and we posted them out on social media on our website the website started 2002 is one of the uh, website that is uh, started for young, young to promote young artists. It was not a gallery. Also, it has a gallery at the end. It was like like I started as a joke. So we call it different names. So we call it uh, Atelier Parking, and then Parking Gallery when the website was up. And then we were uh, parking projects and so on. And now what is remains from this? I will come to that. Is a video archive from Parking Gallery that is uh, now resides in a uh, new media project. This was the last show in 2014, we closed the space because uh, it was also very difficult and there were, the time has changed. Uh, the, the reason that we started the spaces was uh, to, so, to do and to, to show and to, to support many artists, although we did collaboration with uh, many other galleries, art spaces, even sometimes museums. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, we closed the physical space in February 2014. And in uh, July 2014, we started uh, what is it now called New Media Society. We wrote a proposal um, uh, to, to get uh, to receive a fund. It was not very easy to, to do it, but we managed to receive a small fund, project fund for the starting the project. And it was, we provide them a one year timeline. And that timeline still goes on because we, after that, I mean, we somehow managed to, to do on our own until very recently before um, the pandemic. So in that year, we tried to also focus on so much inter, in, interdisciplinary uh, activities. Uh, so, uh, like shifting from one subject to another, but also we had like different focuses on, uh, for example, documentary uh, in contemporary art, uh, sound, as well as expanded cinema. So the project is uh, also started with a bold kind of uh, graphic design, and we always had a good graphic design um, like uh, connection. With the, with the young designers and we started to do this and then it was a very busy and successful summer. Um, we managed to uh, get together, so get, uh, gather so many people for our <clears throat> audiovisual performances, for talks, screenings and lectures. Some of them are now being uploaded in our website slowly because I mean, the, there is a huge uh, archive left, which is not yet available, but we are working on that. Also, beside, I mean, we have to understand our relationship with the city. So we started uh, some projects like that. Beside um, various um, also creative coding workshops, uh, um, work urban, uh, ur urban workshops, and this is some scene from Tegata Vasinejad at uh, our own gallery. And then also in that summer, it ended with uh, kind of next summer when we already um, putting together our space, we, we collaborated with um, yeah, Experimental Film Society in Ireland. And uh, we had a residency and a project and this is a scene from a um, semi-dark room exhibition. It was a part of a luminous void. It was focused on expanded cinema with three artists, um, some of which are now will take part. Bahar Samadhi from Studio 51 will take part in the Motowali performances. We will see uh, in the first 10 days of April. Um, Beside, we tried to also invite, it was, um, we had a residency program at uh, New Media Society as soon as uh, we, uh, we had our own space, which I will go after that to this. Uh, so it was a curated residency and we started to invite uh, many people that we wish to hear from. And then uh, when we moved to this small building, um, which is in downtown Tehran, it was a totally different atmosphere from where we were in the parking gallery. So it, um, it's, a, it's a very small uh, 
one story uh, building. It has a corridor at the, the basement, which we now com converted it into a photo lab. And it has uh, the, the library, the archive, and as well as uh, the main um, project room. And the project room were used for various uh, projects, which I will uh, share with you a couple of them. So also besides, I mean, we have been always uh, looking for, to know how is the impact of us and, uh, and going out of the um, uh, existing spaces. This is a panel on uh, artists and uh, researchers who worked on the uh, art in public space. And then also beside that, uh, we started our talk series and sometimes the screenings and performances, which already we started at Parking Gallery before. So these scenes down on the bottom, you see uh, some scenes from uh, uh, Limited Access. Limited Access is a festival initiated by Parking Gallery and it goes back to 2007. And already eight edition of it has been realized. In the last edition, we, we had the chance to invite uh, Ekmel, and he was with us, and it was a very interesting uh, contribution to our festival, besides many other events were, which were happening. Limited access also, it was like some kind of a, like a mobile project. It was uh, going from one place to another. So this is something from the actual Tehran Museum of Contemporary Art, which went through a tremendous amount of uh, controversial renovation, but now it's open again. But this was uh, interesting to organize a noise uh, sound performance in, in, in the main uh, spiral of the museum. And this happened together. Uh, we didn't work directly with the museum, but they had like different circles. And it was the contemporary music circle of the museum who facilitated this. So it was like no string attached. No, we didn't uh, really talk with them. And then they were just, just, they just provided the space uh, during one of their exhibitions. We also traveled with uh, limited access to many places. This is, these are from Isfahan. There is a panel on uh, sound. Uh, and then there is also sound performance by Leon Rosler and Sora Mutaba. As I mentioned before, uh, Parking Gallery had a video archive since 2004, and uh, these are some scenes from that time. And then when we closed down the physical space, we tried to uh, make it like a nomad space in between. And then when new media uh, projects started, we decided to dedicate a, a portion of our activity to, to, to this, uh, act, to this um, uh, archive. So it has also uh, different sections, but I mean, it's mainly uh, focused on video art, sound, and sometimes documentation of performances. Recently, we have like some documentaries and other uh, moving image material added to it. And it was also being enriched by the open calls which we were making uh, during the during the limited access every one year or two year, which was happening, we make an open call. And so we have for call for portfolios. We don't do thematic calls. So, but from time to time, we also, we have artists visiting us to put their new works. It's a non-commercial um, and uh, non-commercial and educational purpose. Uh, uh, the archive is, uh, so in a way that we don't represent the artist, also we don't charge the people and researchers who come here. At the same time, we don't um, get, get a percent of, uh, in case if there are like artist fees, they, they go directly to the artist. But we keep the curator, um, curatorial fee if there is any uh, in a box to, that's how we fund the project. Okay. Beside that, I mean, one of other parking galleries project is called Iran and Co. It's an archive on representation of uh, Iranian contemporary art beyond the border. We were critical of uh, such a term, and we realized that if uh, we want to go back to and to understand the history behind this kind of uh, 
national representation. We need to also get involved and understand and talk to the makers of this. And also to one way to research it was to locate and uh, track what has been shown under this label of Iranian contemporary art. And so that's how it happened uh, in the course of three years from 2009 to 2011 almost. And then the project is, exists as an archive of interviews, uh, as a library of its own, and uh, uh, also um, one paper, fact sheets about each exhibition, where they're located, who are the artists, who are the sponsors. And we, by that, we try to map some sort of uh, kind of uh, occasions that this term came about. Um, Besides uh, those, New Media Society started to uh, make some publications and as well as some exhibitions. This is one of them. It's called All Other Passport on Mobility of Knowledge and People. And it was with Iranian artists and Serbian artists. And some of them at the time were, oh, but the project was uh, mainly about Europe. So um, it was uh, happening in autumn and coinciding with the two kinds of um, economical crisis and the migrant crisis. So for us, it was inter interesting to put this different position together to look at it. And then there is a, a PDF and an actual physical publication. And then after this happened, we brought it back to Terra. So we could actually test what we have shown in autumn in, in our space. Uh, sharing it with other people. Okay. Um, the wall that you see on the left is one part of the space that we, back then we painted it black. And the, the idea was to use it as a platform, as an archive installation for different projects, while we can use the screening room and the whole space for uh, multiple events and happenings. We, we had uh, created sometimes a study room on a subject that we were working on. This was the th around the 38th anniversary of the Iranian Revolution and um, 79. And it was uh, investigating different medias and how they recorded and grasped uh, this massive change in the Iranian contemporary history. So as you can see, there were also film programs um, by uh, some filmmakers who in the 30th anniversary, uh, they got access to um, some uh, archival footages from the television and otherwise, and they created different uh, interesting, this is a scene from Robert Safarian's film, Gofte um, Guba and I love, I think the conversation with revolution, a dialogue with revolution, if I, translated correctly. Also, we invited a graphic designer, art director, and a researcher to give us a kind of a 10-year overview of uh, how this uh, visual uh, culture has been changing from the years before uh, the 79 and, uh, and after. So these are the posters and, and paintings, official paintings, as you can see the logo um, on, the, on the left. Uh, that was uh, promoted by the so-called revolutionary artist. And on the right, uh, the, you see more of um, leftist posters, uh, but right after the revolution. This, from time to time, also, we had guest curators or uh, artists coming in, and this is curated by um, Patricia Rilko, a Polish designer. And also, it was uh, questioning the authorship about who belongs to uh, I mean, if there are several people uh, working on a project who is who the work is belonging to. And this is Michal Schlaga, an artist who did uh, documentation and uh, cinematography for other artists. And this was his photo of their projects. Uh, there are three, uh, four um, well-known Polish artists. We also um, were interested in participatory projects. Um, so the, the, the picture that you see on the, on the right, it's called um, um, 
on paper without name. So we made an open call uh, for people who send us a drawing without a signature or any indication that who whose drawing it is. I saw something similar sometime some years ago in Berlin. It was called anonymous drawing. But for us, it was also a way to uh, to look at the picture beyond the, the caption and who who made it. Also, we were we started to have some. Um, tricks or gimmicks to um, put artists in, in touch with each other. For example, they could swap the work if they like, if, if they both uh, like the, the work. And then the, the drawings were very, very cheap. So everybody could take something um, with them at home. And on the left, there was sound installation by Leonie Rosler, one of our residents. Um, the archive, uh, that uh, that I mentioned before, uh, uh, also hosted the Urban Jealousy, the Roaming Biennale of Tehran archive, which was being shown for the first time in Tehran. Some of the people maybe um, from Istanbul would remember in 2008, uh, we had an exhibition there. It was called uh, Urban Jealousy um, at Hafriyat. And uh, there was an exhibition uh, which everything would suit in, fit in a suitcase. And it was, of course, performances, sound, videos, and everything else. So we could, it was a kind of a runaway Biennale. Although it was called the Tehran Biennale, it was never there. It was uh, in Istanbul, uh, talking about the process of Biennalization in the region. And then when we moved to Berlin, it also uh, be shown in five, six different places, including the, the New York, um, uh, let me think, uh, 59, uh, it was, if I know, yeah, the squat uh, next to the Batanian building. Now it's converted, it's legalized. But back then it was, a, and then we had uh, different places, Cafe uh, Oria in Oranienstrasse and West Germany, which was a club and some other places as well. Uh, West uh, Valleywood in Weissensee, if I'm not wrong. Some of these spaces are not uh, existing anymore. Anyway, so then after that, we went to Serbia, and after that, it stopped because there were like things happening politically in the country that everybody wanted to have an Iranian art exhibition. I'm talking about the uh, demonstration and unrest in 2009. So we decided to not to go with the flow, and we stopped it there, and still exist as an archive. So um, another project that, I mean, uh, deals with uh, uh, the relationship between the artist and gentrification was called Mapping Karim Khan. And this is the area that actually we are located now. And we tried to, we started a, like a four, five month investigation an interactive map, like offline as you can see on the wall, on the picture, and um, a, a study room to discuss, to, to raise awareness about uh, how uh, gentrification is, is working, how um, artists are contributing to it, and how they can actually be aware of their consequences. And actually, in the, uh, in the past years, I mean, the uh, attraction this part of the town had because of the galleries, because of the artists, the ateliers, and some cultural um, um, initiatives like bookstores, like cafes, etc. Uh, it has been uh, the, the rent has been uh, tripled ever since. So uh, in the project. We also started to interview various people and to, to discuss uh, this. And uh, the wall uh, um, newspaper was uh, curated collectively. We started to speak with various people and to, uh, to see I mean, what do they remember and how this uh, area has changed in the course of the past 25 years. Uh, and it started by some city ordered uh, transformation. Uh, and the um, establishment of the Iranian Artist Forum. And then slowly, for some years, the art, the, the, the gallerists and uh, cultural people were aware, away from this area, but then it became kind of hip. And that's how it started uh, 
the problem. So as you can see, also we had different attendants, different people, different experts, and people would share what they know on the map. Also, we had a, like a quest Q and A uh, and the map, so people could uh, indicate uh, um, their whereabouts, who, who hangout places where they are going, and as well as. Um, uh, questions about how do they feel about this? Do they do they consider leaving? If they leave, uh, uh, would they go if the rent will uh, go high, etc. And then we also published it, the result in the magazine, in an in a art and uh, city magazine. Another uh, participatory project that we did was about uh, secondhand clothes. It was called Tanakora in progress. Tanakora is a name of uh, uh, so, uh, character uh, in a soap opera, uh, in Japanese soap opera, which was really popular in the 60s. And then, as I, in the part of the, the series, the, the people start to sell secondhand clothes. And that's how uh, secondhand shops in Iran adopted this name. So, this is like uh, the, the, the second one, uh, second time that we did it. The first time it was in. The first time it was in uh, in parking gallery, but this time we had we asked people to uh, write uh, to fill a form, and by this form they um, would uh, give us information that uh, what to do with this uh, clothes. I mean, is it to to donate? Is it to exchange? Is it to sell? And is it to I don't know if they are what condition they are. They have to be repaired. On the back, we had a, like a, a swing machine to to repair those. And also, they would write a small story in that form if there if this object, this uh, piece of clothing, has a has a has a story. So it was very interesting because some people would read and some people were looking something to wear and some people were trying to exchange or to get a discount. It was like very uh, interesting experience for all of us who took part. And then the people would come with their wardrobes, like, I mean, the things that they couldn't wear. And then we are still uh, sometimes sharing the same um, clothes uh, ever since. So it was also a bit like trying to be a little bit eco-friendly and not to buy so many things. <clears throat> Now I'm going to mention a couple of like uh, collectives and initiatives that we have been collaborating with, and then a few other projects, and then we can uh, move on uh, with the program that we are doing at Amber. This is how I'm going to end. So this is uh, called Rochdad uh, Documentary as an initiative that existed before uh, us, but then they after they um, the, the place that they had uh, holding their their screenings uh, closed down, they they joined us. And then ever since we started to make uh, uh, bi-weekly uh, screening programs uh, followed by lectures and presentations and very deba uh, hot debates. And it was their uh, focus is on uh, psycho, uh, so sociologic um, documentaries. So they have a, this approach from this, the approach of like sociology, they're looking at um, um, documentary films as, as a medium to discuss various subjects. And they were, they worked extensively on migra migrations and minorities in Iran. They worked on, on the water crisis, as well as uh, beside our uh, revolution program, they, they, they screened a couple of, uh, uh, documentaries relating to that time. As you can see in this uh, picture, they're like uh, one of the other concerns was the the, the 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 program they had on the right to the city, and then uh, later the last program they had was on civil movements in, in different uh, um, different countries. Well, since three years ago, we started a, like also a summer school, which was uh, the first one was called School for Moving Images. And then we had different um, presenters from Iran and abroad. And then we continued this program um, uh, for another year. And then uh, the last one, I will explain that how we had to transform it into an on online platform later 
because it was uh, affected by the pandemic. This is our collaborators from San Andach, which they invited us to go to an exhibition uh, together, uh, to, uh, to co-curate an exhibition together with them. It was called Under Construction, and it was like ever never-ending uh, constructions that is happening in Iranian cities, demolishing uh, not very old buildings and building always new. So there is a big business in the real estate and also generates bubble. So in this case, I mean, we, we went uh, with uh, some some artists there and then we, it was like two abandoned uh, apartments next to each other and, and we showed the works that we brought with ourselves there. Um, another project of the archive wall was, uh, was called Dustopedia. And Dustopedia was an encyclopedia on dust uh, from different uh, angles, different uh, chapters that we, we could perceive. So there was a, a podcast dedicated to sound, and then there was a video program. And the newest video program, actually, we showed it at Amber. It was called uh, Dust to Come. But before that, there is a program called Moving Dust, which was looking at the uh, Iranian uh, archive uh, of uh, Parking Video Library and um, to look at how, how the, this uh, subject is addressed. So it was initially um, an invitation from Poland, and then uh, it ended up uh, on a website, and then we showed when, when we um, set up the screening room here at New Media Society, we also put together a video program called Moving Dust. And Moving Dust, uh, after we showed it, it was attracted uh, the attention of um, some very active individuals and collectives in other cities in Iran. And then they showed, um, they showed it in uh, Shiraz and Kerman and Bandarapas, which is the very big, port, important port of the Persian Gulf. And then as well as Isfahan. So beside that, I mean, we showed it already in Istanbul, a depot one time. So we hope that we can show it one time in Berlin in the near future. Um, beside this, uh, every time we try to also to uh, to um, to be able to create a space of debate. This is in Hormuz Island. We made a, like a video workshop with Anaita Hikmet and Nebras Obeisavi and myself. So this is actually in the Portuguese uh, castle, which remained from the colonial, the short colonial time. And uh, we are holding the workshop there. And then in a rented house by one of the locals. Um, another project participatory ones, it was like um, a knockout ping pong tournament, table tennis, as they say. it. And then it was interesting because it was the art week here. And they invited us to do something, but we were also a little bit irritated because they didn't publish any open call. So nobody could actually take part in this uh, art week. So it was basically the artists, uh, the, the gallerists and their artist friends. So it was like, so for us, it was a bit like weird to, we didn't know what to do with this invitation. And then we came up with the idea of a knockout tournament where artists who have a gallery play against the artists who don't. So 32 artists uh, signed up. Um, and uh, they were, um, they were uh, playing very, very seriously. And this, uh, on the bottom, you can see the awards. This is the first award, the chandelier. And this is like the Iranian toilet uh, replica <laughs> by Sem made by uh, the cement. It's the second prize. And, uh, Half a kilo weight is the third. So <laughs> that was the um, the tournament. It was basically so everybody who would come to the space, we were just playing ping pong and talking, and nothing else. There was no, let's say, art, because there were. <laughs> it was funny. Um, some people come and they didn't understand the event, and some people they we waited their time to play in the between the the matches. Anyway. Some educational project programs. This was in collaboration with um, the, um, the school in uh, Leipzig. Uh, curating Tehran um, was an intensive course on uh, curating. 
and it was interrupted uh, in, the, in the middle. We didn't know why, but it was a very interesting program. It was going on. The preparation was going for three months. It was collaborating with uh, one educational institute, one foundation, and one gallery. And uh, then um, it was uh, in the first week, it was um, suddenly we realized that we had to stop. Anyway, um, another public art in public space project that I wanted to share with you before my time is up. I, I see now there is 35 minutes and counting. So I think I have 10 minutes. And because we don't have somebody, so someone in between, maybe we can have some questions after that, I hope. So this was a, like a project we did together with the collective animation experiment, which is dedicated to experimental cinema and animation and it's three years old already and they started their first programmation here with us um, the animation walk uh, was um, the joint idea by new media society and animation experiment and then um, with the asifa the uh, animation association of iran it was the anime world animation day so we had the idea to actually take the animation to the city and we would go with a, like a portfolio with a mobile phone or a tablet to the shopkeepers and show it to them. And they choose the, the, the piece that they're gonna host. Normally they had a TV or they have like some sort of screens and we would help them setting this up. And it was then what we published a map. And you can see here, um, there are some scenes from um, glass workshop, a carpet shop, a gallery, and a computer supplies. And there are like so many others um, happening in the, I think, uh, more than 25 locations hosted this. And then after that, we were, um, this is the, uh, a kind of a, like a sandwich bar, a gallery, and another printer shop. Um, then we were invited to Vienna, and the, the project in Vienna was like in uh, I think 19, 20 locations spread uh, in two areas of the city. And then it was lasted for a month. And then they were also making some sort of um, tours to, 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 to visit the, the program. And then the last thing we did, it was in a very interesting uh, pedestrian area in Nisbah, uh, the Armenian. Uh, area and um, it was uh, just before uh, uh, when we did it uh, one way after it was um, something happened politically in Iran that changed uh, our uh, relationship forever with, uh, public space so uh, the, the demonstration which was uh, very violent against the raising of the oil price um, Around those times, uh, I go a little bit back. I mean, also from the archives, we created some sort of like film festivals. This went to Vienna and then, then went to Munich. And then another, the last were, uh, edition of Limited Access, which I mentioned at the beginning of my talk. There's some scenes from that. So we uh, dedicated the uh, platform three uh, space uh, completely to the new media and animation these are some scenes from our, our own gallery which were uh, image based uh, video installations and the, the time based media and then also we hosted uh, the, the vr film by Soela golestani which is also uh, we'll talk next week about a storytelling in 360 degree uh, in Amber Festival. The sound uh, program was always uh, a crucial part of the um, limited access. And the last one also, we had many, many uh, groups and initiatives uh, to, um, on experimental sound, noise, and audiovisuals. Uh, and it was coinciding with the Noise I Noise uh, collective publishing their first uh, album. Now they're, I think, after two years, they uh, they're uh, making their fourth or fifth compl compilations, uh, publishing it online. So I recommend it if you're interested. During the pandemic and before that, we still were hosting like some exhibitions inside, uh, and these were uh, genuinely uh, related to archive curated shows and mono uh, solo shows 
and that what you see is from Gazelle, uh, Iranian artist. Uh, she will also performing at Motevali and uh, she will have a piece in the future um, screening that we have at the, on 16th of April. This is also some other exhibitions from by Studio 51 and friends at uh, our space. And also we had uh, some programs that were interrupted by the pandemic. This was one of them, the artist curator workshops that two uh, talk series happened and then it was, and everything else had to go online. Beside that, uh, the, the first version of Motewali also um, coincided with a uh, public announcement. We, we already knew that the virus started, uh, entered the country, but it was not officially uh, announced. We were uh, slowly taking measures. Uh, and then at the end, the last uh, performances, we had to do it uh, completely online. This one on the bottom with uh, Rahel Bahrami and uh, Farnoosh al which one of them will perform in the next Notawari as well. The summer school, as I told you, they had to be totally transformed and it went fully online. And then these are the, as my time is slowly up, these are the program that uh, we prepared for uh, Amber Festival. This has already happened, the, the Dust to Come. As I talked before, it was a, a part of the Dustopedia. And then we were happy to share this um, uh, confused vision of future with you, um, the beginning of the festival. Uh, Motevali, as I mentioned, is gonna take place uh, next week, um, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, uh, with a very interesting lineup. And I also will be at a lecture performance, hopefully, if I manage. Um, and this is the last program that we have, uh, except for the lab. Um, and this is a video screening program that somehow reflects the, the subject of the festival in different perspectives. And thank you for now. So I will be happy if there are any questions. Sorry that I had to talk so fast. Please uh, forgive me. And I'm looking forward to hear from you guys. Thank you, Amrali. <clears throat> yeah, any, is there any question, any comments? Thanks a lot, uh, Amir Ali. This is Matthias. Um, it was a really insightful presentation, um, and and uh, you have quite a, a big range. What would you describe as the as the center um, interest of uh, new media society today? Um. Very good question, because I mean, we try to also uh, be as inclusive as we can, and then also to host as well different uh, peoples and different projects, besides like doing our own thing. And then, uh, I mean, what thing I know, it was not, it is that, I mean, this, although it is called New Media Society, it's not, we didn't dedicate all our forces to new media. I mean, we did so many other things as you can, I could see in the presentation. And then there, the, the, I mean, we could uh, look at this from different angles, but my take on this subject is like also, we didn't want to also uh, end up only pe with people who are working with technologies per se. And we had a, like a very strong, um, uh, focus on, on the archive, any kind of archive, digital, analog or otherwise. So we try to um, bring people from different disciplines together. This is something that doesn't happen. And then also the, the, the climate, the atmosphere of the art scene in Tehran and generally is to segregate and is to like divide. And then you have many, many other interesting people, but they're not 
actually working with each other. They try. They have their own tribal um, uh, behavior and so on. So we try to stay away from here. But since also we started to have a building and things like that, also it was not really easy to stay away from those. Uh, uh, cycles. So, but I mean, what happened with the pandemic is like many things that you could, you could see in the presentation. I mean, we couldn't do in the past year. So we were actually um, uh, trying to um, focus on what we have been doing uh, to work a little bit on the archive uh, to provide more content of uh, what we have and what we had uh, hosted. But beside that, I mean, it was um, a calm year, but also not very happy one. So because uh, we couldn't meet physically, and we also we didn't want to urge ourselves to be visible and to produce so many things online, and then to uh, and with what energy? And it was like uh, we tried to not to make ourselves too exhausted. Of course, we had like priorities that we had to take care, of, and then some projects that we had to take in in order to survive but um, right now i think there is another limited access coming up but we have no idea that actually we can have we can uh, run it uh, by september or not but um, the focus will be um, to act as a hub and if the pandemic wouldn't happen we wanted to give the space for two weeks uh, to each uh, collective that we have been worked with in different cities. So they, we would host them here while we are working here upstairs in the office where I'm sitting now. Um, and then they could get the control of uh, what we have uh, to curate and to organize what they, what is uh, meaningful for them and they want what they want to show to the audience in Tehran. So that didn't happen, unfortunately, and that was... Uh, my pity. I hope I could uh, uh, answer your question, Matthias. Thank you very much, Amitani. Uh, so if uh, um, nobody else is asking, I have a follow-up question, and it's uh, it's also related to the pandemic that you um, uh, just also mentioned. Um, what are your strategies, uh, um, community-wise, uh, during this pandemic that, that also separates by are implemented to create or, or, or further host the community? Mm, to be honest, it's a, it's a dilemma. It's a question for me as well. I mean, it's like, um, how much can we risk? Because there is no vaccination on the horizon. There is no end to this. And then we try to also, I mean, we managed to do a really um, heavy and a project which was our uh, former summer school which was happening in winter 2021 and it was um, even that we had like connection problems and also attention problems and so other things but um, strategy wise I think I mean uh, we are we did some projects which was actually happening in outdoor in our terrace and those were good, but I mean, I don't know if it's like, it can be 100% healthy for everybody, but also it's not healthy to stay indoor all the time and not to see anybody. So we were thinking of like, uh, maybe to do some sort of activities in, in public space, but at the same time, I mean, the, 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 the general climate of the, of the country is not in a way that you can pull uh, projects like that or like at least you do something and it makes you you happy and you document it and you show it, show it to your friend i'm not talking about this kind of things that you post something that it will be taken away or this kind of something really engaging as you said uh, commun community wise 
And then I think the community uh, was partially also here because it was a kind of a safe space for people to be, uh, to, to, to talk, to, to communicate. And when we don't have uh, that to offer, um, and then uh, we understand that not everybody has access to the fast internet. So what can we do to reach them? This is a big, big thing. So, I mean, we can call still by phone, we can try to, but that's a lot of like um, things to, to handle. And we are a small team. We hope that we can, there, there will be some better things on the horizon, but we cannot be very optimistic, to be honest. Like, I uh, don't know about if we can stay in this building because it's rented from a cultural family below the neighborhood price. And then if they want to sell it and if they change their mind, we don't know, we cannot afford to have something like this uh, similar to this, even uh, out further outside of the center. So I don't know. I hope that we can continue like nomads and also online, but that needs a, like a minimum space uh, required for certain activities. If even if it's like person to person um, communication is not possible or had to be transformed. So thank you for the question, Matthias. Yes. Hello, Amirli. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I, I may ask a question and maybe like kind of comment. Uh, was your identity in the work that you did with Hafriyat in back in days, it was also a new media society or the identity was different? I it was parking gallery back then, but new media society didn't exist. A new media society started 2014. And parking gallery uh, closed this physical space also a few months before. So back then, the, uh, it was uh, another collective that I explained in the beginning of my talk. It was called parking gallery. This slide that yeah, I'm showing. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I, I joined a bit later. Maybe I missed it. Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks. Th thanks. Thank you. But it was a very good time in Istanbul. I know that uh, in Istanbul that many, many things has changed and maybe similar things are not as easy to, to, to pull because we didn't have any budgets. I mean, there were, we showed the, the concept to the guys from Afria. It was me and uh, the artist Serhat Koksal. Maybe some of you know him. He's uh, also a VJ, DJ and uh, activist. Yeah, we know him. Yes, yeah, it, it was a it was a very uh, group that I followed very fondly. I still follow it individually. The, those Hafriyat group, uh, I, I was surprised and uh, very liked that you had uh, such a connection in the past years. It was a good connection, better communication before, like in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, between the, uh, Iran and Turkey. Uh, um, I mean, also some are. I mean, I I've been there many times. I mean mainly in Istanbul, but also I worked with, uh, I worked with many people there actually, with people from PIST, uh, from Carbon Sarai, uh, we, we did a project with ECMEL, with Amber Festival, we had a resident there. So it was a good dynamic and it was our currency, it was not really down the drain. It's like uh, we could uh, really jump in a plane and without a visa do something there, and come back in a week. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a dream now because I mean, um, you you have to sell your kidney to buy to buy a plane ticket now. It is it's a dream for us too. I mean, it was that 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 era lasted till thousand two thousand eleven. Since then, political conditions totally changed in 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 Istanbul in Turkey. Uh, the mid two thousands were the I mean flourishing of these all cultural activities, initiations, new so associations, uh, independent galleries. It was the best years, I can say. Now, uh, yeah, we don't have that um, lively, liveliness in the art scene at all. And yeah, of course, also um, the um, somehow funding was kind of much better than today, but also the economical situations in both countries are totally um, Bad now, yeah.
Also, the political climate is yeah, like um, it's, um, sometimes I feel it's unsafe. <laughs> yeah, but these are all politics since 2011. I mean, what has changed is the politics in Turkey, <laughs> which these are all the reflections of this political change, actually. True, true. Yes, we are, we are following from the, the, a little bit far. And then actually, it caused a lot of people to move out of Turkey, as I know. And then I would meet them in, in Berlin or other places. And it is um, it's sad. But here we are again. So we hope that, I don't know, sometimes maybe uh, the, the virtual space can help us, like here, that we, I feel kind of connected again. With, uh, with friends from uh, Istanbul, Izmir, and so on. So it was like, it was a good chance. And thanks to uh, Amber Festival, this is already starting. So I, I think my time is up, but if there are questions, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm happy because we don't have anybody after me, but I mean, I don't want to make you bored, guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, at half past five, we will have others presentation just to we can uh, make some preparation for it okay. uh, but I would say that this this connection is very 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 important for us in the countries like our condition because when we are kind of locked inside of ourselves <clears throat> um, you know the only only option to get out of that depression is somehow to touch the the arts word I mean so it is the, making these connections these um, collaborations from west east everywhere uh, really helping it is much more important than uh, a, a Western people can can imagine I mean because this condition is mm, you know we, we we experience it and we need the importance of this this um, feeling of being connected exactly and we were feeling that we could do something and we would just do it and now we were also waiting or pausing but we, we can still do it i guess uh, without any means or any funds or any somebody who oversee these projects i mean i i really yeah. um, think of it the, since you had this workshop in tehran at limited access so yeah. it, generate a kind of a, like a, also a new second thoughts that how to look at things. Yeah, but it is also related to this to kind of, in, in quotation, colonization of the art scene as well. I mean, we, for example, we or even those times, our connection in the uh, much less than, uh, I mean, in, in between uh, Middle Eastern countries, much less uh, than uh, connections between West and Middle East. So, I mean, that also is another problem that we should come over that we should have a better develop better connections and better collaborations with or without money or whatever uh, in the Middle East and uh, you know MENA region and with the neighbors etc I mean so this is this is I think what we need to yeah as Furuk says in the chat dynamic uh, waiting <laughs> yes um, thank you, everyone. So I'm uh, I'm glad that you. I hope to see you again next week for the performances, and or see you uh, all in the lab. So, but I'm uh, I'm happy that you could listen, and I I'm happy that you waited all this long. Uh, and thanks for inv inviting. Looking forward to hear from you all, and. Uh, in the following uh, hour and, and tomorrow. Thank you, Amir Ali. Thank you for the presentation and all your contributions. And yeah, we are looking forward for the next following events. And now at half past five, Adef will be presenting and in this room again. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Have, yeah, well, thank you.
Okay, so um, if if you like, Ranwa, um, I can give a, a very quick uh, introduction, just two sentences. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Matthias. Hi, Matthias. Hi, Ranwa. If you like, can give, can give a very quick introduction, just two sentences, and then you can start. Okay. Um, so my name is Ranwa Yahya. I am uh, one of the founders. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to uh, fund the environment around me a little bit. <laughs> uh, Ranwa, are you still here? Hi. Hello again. I'm sorry. My internet is not necessarily very stable. It's Cairo. Uh, <laughs> um, so let me repeat. My name is Ranwa Yahya. I am one of the founders of the Arab Digital Expression Foundation, which is an organization that is uh, um, revolves around um, quite a few core themes, uh, education uh, being at the core of it, expression, another one, um, digital tools, um, uh, values of open culture um, across the board. And this is something that we've been uh, doing since 2005. Um, so quite a big change from 2005 till today when we are talking about uh, uh, um, uh, awareness and practices in open culture. Um, we run quite a few projects, uh, um, some of them for youth, for teenagers, um, but also for young professionals and experts. Um, we have... Uh, um, a small video prepared uh, uh, of an event that we did in 20. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Just yeah. go on. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, um, this small video that we will be sharing with you is uh, about bringing in a group of around 30 to 40 uh, young and experts. Uh, um, it's a creative coding uh, sort of uh, camp uh, where we lived over 10 days with each other and uh, jammed and exchanged knowledge and experiences and practices and actually also produced projects. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we can put the video now. Um, I guess Laura has connection problems, but uh, she tries to reconnect to show the video. Maybe we can go on if this is okay, because um, I guess she's still trying. <laughs> As the video is getting ready, I can talk a little bit more about uh, the projects that we do, or at least um, other um, since last January, uh, also 
Um, I mean, we, we, uh, we uh, our main office is in Cairo, Egypt, uh, and uh, the, which was where the project was incepted in 2005. Uh, and we have worked in many different Arab countries. Adif is a regional uh, 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 foundation. And so we have had activities and projects in Tunisia and Lebanon uh, and some decentralized ones in the West Bank in Palestine. Um, we uh, uh, have engaged in uh, quite a few projects related to archives, related to knowledge production in the Arabic language, specifically where it pertains to digital um, tools and practices and experimentation of different uh, digital tools for the purpose of expression. Uh, um, and um, we are big advocates of collaborative uh, uh, methods of learning. Um, uh, whether it's peer-to-peer, -peer, um, trainer to trainee, uh, it's always about an exchange um, of knowledge that we believe is uh, uh, um, what promotes us. Uh, um, a big part of uh, um, our practice is a lot about learning, so even within ADIF as an organization, um, the element of learning among staff is also uh, um, a very big part of our identity. Um, we have just established ADIF Berlin last January. Um, it's a very, very exciting step for us um, because there are many of uh, uh, the professional and the young creatives and makers um, who are there for us being in Berlin also sort of uh, will put us put us closer in a situation where we can in, engage with the latest state of the art practices in digital technology and digital art uh, and all the different explorations uh, on that level and uh, actually being part of this festival is one of the direct uh, one of the direct results of setting up in Adolf Berlin. So we are very, very excited and happy to be part of this, uh, uh, of this process. Um, in, in this year, specifically, um, what Adolf Berlin has been actively engaged in is a series of workshops on media and technology. Uh, this is basically a process in which we uh, um, uh, explore and try to unearth uh, different and uh, new uses of uh, digital tools that could promote a more critical, uh, uh, more impactful uh, narrative uh, in journalism. Um, journalism being the practice of trying to unearth the truth, trying to uncover uh, information and make it available to the public. Um, and um, it's, it's a very exciting series of workshops that we have started to engage in um, that also include uh, young journalists uh, from the Arab region, but also from Europe. Um, and uh, 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 trying to invite in many different current practices of how we can use technology um, to further our critical narrative uh, on the phone. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to, um, is, is the video close to ready? Is, uh, have we resolved the technical uh, problems?
other thing that we're working on is the uh, circuit. Maybe one first uh, a question about um, the uh, activities of BEDEF. So we saw a camp um, with with many um, people in Alexandria. Can you tell a bit about the camp? Um, yeah, the camp is usually for us one of our um, highest sort of impact activities. Um, First of all, because the component of living together um, really plays a big role in how we um, interact with each other and how we exchange practices uh, with each other. And because we have do been doing this for a very long time, we understand the dynamics of um, the camps and how we can capitalize on every moment um, to create that sort of impact. So the camps as a framework for us is uh, uh, um, a very, very uh, uh, impactful tool um, that brings people together. And as you know, at the end of the video, it says it creates a community that outlives the camp itself. Um, and this has happened over and over again. Uh, um, to, it's enough to know that this is a very successful practice. Um, and that in which we also hope it would be replicated by many different groups because this is how you can achieve even higher impact in in that sense of you know of collaboration of uh, you know this trust building process that makes us excited about sharing our knowledges and experiences uh, and uh, practices. Another very uh, unique thing about um, our camps is that it, uh, it targets a very wide spectrum of uh, um, audience, of young professionals and experts um, that come from a wide, wide spectrum of fields, um, whether in arts or technology, um, of course, in, in research uh, and so on. Uh, and um, um, very, for, you know, when, when Within the core of ADIF, we are engaging with um, open tools, uh, um, collaborative methodologies, um, et cetera, and you know, helping to bring out all the diversity of the participants that we have there. What ends up happening is an extremely rich experience uh, um, for, quite, for, for almost everyone involved. Um, we were very happy that uh, Matthias uh, joined our activity more than uh, once. Um, so maybe as as someone who has uh, been part of it, maybe you yourself, uh, Matthias, can uh, can also um, give an example of this.
Hi, I'm uh, really happy that you are part uh, of this festival and I think uh, ADEF is creating a very rich, a very diverse and a uh, very large uh, network um, of uh, people in art and technology with a, um, a big social impact. That's how I um, always um, experienced it. Um, also in this festival are uh, several um, uh, uh, fellows of uh, ADEF um, uh, present. And um, I think what is really impressive is the, the wideness and the internationality, if, if I may say that, um, of the network. Um, and also the diversity in um, part of uh, creativity. So it is from, uh, I remember from performance art uh, to drawing, to um, uh, staging things, to uh, socially engaged practice. And now, and maybe you want to say a bit more about that, um, also about in, or, or already from the beginning about investigative uh, journalism and uh, research um, on data, on news, on um, uh, what is going on in, in a country, what is going on in society, and how to um, uh, shed a new light uh, on that. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we, we, um, we know that, you know, when we're talking about expression and we're talking about critical narratives, uh, um, this practice of uh, investigative journalism is, you know, at uh, is is a very in-depth uh, uh, um, practice, um, and in in many ways it also could be um, a dangerous one uh, for the people who are engaging in it. Specifically, if we are talking about issues related to the region within which we live. Uh, um, which actually could cause, you know, um, a freedom of expression uh, um, in a region such as ours is something actually even dangerous for us to to um, to work on at these times. Uh, um, so it, 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 our our eagerness to try and and be present and try to be up to date in providing young journalists an array of tools that they could make use of in their potential work in investigative journalism um, for us is very crucial because I mean you 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 need that information in a, in a in areas where the truth is always often uh, uh, stifled uh, um, being able to um, uh, continue to do this work and maybe aided by different tools, uh, um, increase the impact or maybe the, the, the fact-finding uh, work that you're doing is, is, is something that is not, uh, I mean, it's, it's a thing of high value um, where, where we live because already trying to um, do this practice is, uh, is already extremely difficult. Um, and so what we're attempting to do is trying to uh, engage in these, with trying to look into uh, 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 recent experiences, um, successful or experimental or not, uh, um, that have happened previously, including, for example, the work of Christophe and Matthias, uh, um, for us as um, a, a, an important element to um, get exposed to such practices and and uh, in the hope of taking it further and building up on this knowledge and try and maybe uh, um, practice it within our own localities, local contexts, etc. Uh, um, and try to also search and look for tools that also uh, um, have a relevance to us and and uh, and and what we are able to do uh, and practice in our regions amid uh, uh, amid this you know you can call it censorship you can call it uh, um, so um, so yeah this this is one of the processes that uh, uh, we are doing uh, uh, in this year in 2021 that we're hoping to engage in
Thank you very much. Um, I would also like to, to stress the fact that you um, are running a huge community center in Cairo um, with many courses. And now a new also um, uh, ADEF uh, Berlin. Um, so uh, ADEF is in Berlin as the, the biggest, with the biggest Arabic uh, diaspora, as I was told, and an intellectual Arabic hotspot. Um, uh, would you like to say something about that? Um, it's very exciting. I mean, over the past uh, six, seven years, uh, 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 I, I keep hearing of, you know, Berlin is becoming the new Arab capital. Uh, uh, we're all there. Why is Adif not there? Uh, and that this is actually happening now and we're moving there despite the so many challenges of our times uh, um, is something that uh, is extremely exciting. Uh, I myself as well will be moving to Berlin next summer and um, really, really looking forward to engaging um, with the community in Berlin, but not only in Berlin, across Europe. Uh, uh, and, and also um, see how this community can as well engage with the already rich and diversified community of ODIF, which is, you know, everywhere in the world, to be honest. I mean, even with Cairo being our headquarters and uh, maybe the Egyptians being the biggest uh, 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 number in terms of numbers, uh, members of, uh, of ODIF, uh, uh, but really uh, members of our network are everywhere and, and with us also creating another uh, uh, um, physical space as well in Berlin. Uh, in addition to the physical space we have in Cairo, um, it is for us an extremely exciting uh, endeavor. And we are so looking forward to what we will also learn from this process and, uh, and share. Thank you very much, Ranva. Um, if uh, somebody else would like to um, uh, ask a question, you can either just type it in the chat or um, also uh, uh, open your microphone and uh, talk directly here. Yeah, <laughs> looks like there are uh, no uh, further questions. Uh, you will also have a workshop in uh, this uh, uh, festival. Would you like to maybe say a few words about that? Uh, I, I would very much like to invite uh, Laura, um, who is the other Berlin coordinator uh, uh, and who has been uh, developing this process. Um, to to do that. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So. Um, Thank you everyone for, for joining and thank you Rano for, for the introduction. So we're very happy to, to be, um, to, to connect with, the, with this network during the, the Amber Festival. And we will have an event on April 10th, uh, in which, which is part of this uh, media and tech series that Rano introduced in, uh, in her presentation. Uh, and uh, during this event, we bring uh, together two practitioners practitioners uh, from different backgrounds um, talking about their, their practice in working their, with the uh, digitally created environments and uh, virtual environments for telling a story uh, from the perspective of uh, um, a narrator in, uh, in game design practice and uh, um, 
um, from the perspective of a, a interactive documentary filmmaker. Uh, and these two um, participants would be Alessandro Bertelle and uh, Yasmina Layat. And uh, so uh, we hope with this event to, to bring together different backgrounds and, and uh, the implications of uh, narrating with these uh, uh, aesthetic uh, tools and uh, uh, the potential that, that creative coding and game design and game environment have in, uh, in narrating uh, contemporary issues, uh, as well as in narrating uh, any, any story. So with the team at ADEF and with the people that uh, uh, particip are participating in this media and tech series, we will try to have a, a very open and honest discussion about uh, what are the, the pitfalls and the shortcomings of these different uh, narrative strategies and what um, we can learn from each other also as practitioners and what we can learn from the tools and what we can learn from what is uh, uh, designed uh, as, a, as a default and what we can actually hack and adapt to our, uh, to our needs and, uh, and to the, um, the audiences that we, that we have in mind. When, uh, when telling a story. So it is something that is very much related to um, journalism, but also in general about um, storytelling as a very powerful tool for actually, yeah, trying to unearth the truth uh, that, uh, that also Ranma mentioned in, in the presentation. So yeah, we, we really hope to, um, uh, you want to jo you join the conversation as well and, um, um, yeah, so on April 10, we will, uh, we will uh, have the chance, the opportunity to discuss again on these issues. So looking forward to that and thank you very much. Thank you both uh, for this presentation. It will be later um, uh, online on uh, the YouTube and the Vimeo channel and I'm looking very much forward um, to uh, uh, the workshop. Thank you.